We all dream from the time we're little kids about being able to fly, right? And what that would be like. While humans can fly, it's still a work in progress. Insects, birds, and bats have had millions of years to work out the kinks. So how did flight evolve in nature? And how can our understanding of its evolution and mechanics improve our aerial abilities? Let's take flight to find out. Insects evolved flight about 400 million years ago. When insects began to fly, there was nothing else in the air. Flight was an incredible evolutionary innovation that really led to insects' success on the planet. How flight evolved in insects is one of the biggest unknowns in evolutionary biology. It's a huge mystery. One way to approach the question is to look at wingless insects today and ask, can they fly? And that's an odd question, right? How can a wingless insect fly? But are they capable of controlled aerial behavior? In the last 10 years, we've done a lot of experiments in tropical rainforests, climbing trees, grabbing primitive kinds of insects, and throwing them out of trees. And we want to see what they do while they're in midair. And the amazing thing is, for a whole range of things, you drop them upside down, they right themselves in midair like a falling cat. And then they start to glide. They have targeting and gliding and very sophisticated aerodynamic control and maneuverability in the complete absence of wings. So this is an amazing discovery. Researchers call this the tree down hypothesis. It's an aerial origin. There are also competing terrestrial origins. And these hypotheses are not just true for insects, but for birds and their ancestors, dinosaurs as well. There's quite a bit of discussion and debate about exactly how flight evolved in dinosaurs. And there's a couple of different hypotheses. One we like to think of as the ground up hypothesis, where birds might run along the ground and be able to open their wings and take a couple flaps and maybe move a little bit and get, get airborne. And flight evolution in these larger creatures seems to have something to do with these things. Probably the most important characteristic that birds would have had to evolve for flight is feathers. And we now believe, looking at fossils, that feathers evolved even before flight, and probably for keeping them warm and for insulation against cold or for temperature changes, and sexual selection, and to wow their mates. Even though the origins of flight are a bit fuzzy, we understand a lot more about how these magnificent creatures fly now. The primary way that birds fly is that they have a downstroke, which gives lift, but then they have to get the wing back up without, you know, without getting too much resistance so that they can be ready for a second stroke. Now, some birds fly very differently. For example, hummingbirds. And in hummingbirds, they actually get lift on both strokes. And that's why they're able to hover because they can get lift when they flap forward, but then they can actually turn the wing and flap backwards and get lift when they're flapping backwards. And if you watch our penguins up in the penguin tank, they kind of do the same thing when they're swimming. So they're flying like this through the water. And we're still learning about flight. We do behavioral and aerodynamic work on birds, and then we release all birds that we capture. Anything that the hummingbird can do in the air, we are interested in figuring out what it's doing, describing it, and then mechanistically trying to figure out how it's doing it. The work Robert and his team do in their lab influence engineering for better man-made flight. There is an entire emerging field of technology called micro-air vehicles, whereby people are seeking to miniaturize flying platforms for purposes of surveillance or pizza delivery and many other kinds of interesting services. Who knows how human flight might evolve? Insects have been flying for probably 400 million years, and we've been flying for about 100 years. So in some ways, they can do so many things better than we can. So we still have a lot to learn from the ways that they've evolved to overcome the obstacles in dealing with the same kind of natural forces and physical forces that we have to overcome to fly. So we have a lot to learn from the insects.